What's going on guys? Coach Joe here at Garage De La Swole. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my program that I'm currently doing, which is a new training style that I have never done in the past really. So I'm very excited to talk about that. But before we get into that exactly, I wanna kinda of meet some of you new guys. I've been consistently posting, so we have a, a bunch of new subscribers. So I'm gonna give you some background and history on myself. We're also gonna talk about the different training systems that I used along my career, because I've been training since I was about 13 years old. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of what I'm doing today. Now, if you guys already know who I am, the things I've done in the past, I'll give you guys timestamps down below. So just click wherever you guys wanna start watching. And if not, this will give you a bit of an introduction to who I am, kind of where I started and where I'm at right now. But with that being said, guys, make sure you get a pen and paper. This is definitely gonna be one of those videos where you need a pen and paper because you're gonna be taking notes and it's also probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video. So if you can't finish it all today, you know, make your timestamp wherever and then come back and finish it another day. But once again, get your pen and paper. For those of you guys that don't know me, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate your guys' support and just diving into the videos. We have over a thousand videos that started man, over 10 years ago to then currently where I'm at today, there's a ton of knowledge. There's a lot of things that I've done right, things I've done wrong, collaborations, all sorts of goodies. So if you have time, just go through the channel. There's a ton of different playlists, figure out what you're interested in. And my goal simply this channel is just to help you wherever you're at in your journey through my experience. I don't claim to know everything. I definitely don't know everything. And I really try to come at it as, hey, this is what I'm doing, or this is what I've heard, or this is what I've learned. You know, try it out for yourself and see how you can implement it into your training. And at the end of the day, we're all just trying to get better. And that's what this whole channel is about, is me getting better as an athlete and coach, you guys getting better as athletes and coaches and just kicking ass with life. So check out all those videos. So when it comes to me in a nutshell, I'm about to be 31 years old, okay? And in that time, I've always been an athlete. I'm a coach, obviously, to other athletes, whether it's in strength sports or clients that I work with, and also a high school sports coach, uh, coach lacrosse at a local high school. And I was a gym owner for about eight years, okay? So I own an actual physical gym location for eight years. I've dealt with thousands of people in that time since I started this journey. And I do have a lot of anecdotal evidence, you know, just from training that many people and training myself, and also, like I said, traveling talking to some of the best coaches in the industry, picking their brains, using it, you know, experimenting. So there's just a lot to be said with the information that I try to put out there. Almost half my life has been devoted to training on a very regular basis. Obviously, when I started training, I didn't know the stuff that I do now, but it's been a habit from then and just a experience of learning and growth until today. And I'll continue to do that for the rest of my life. Previous athletic background is I started off in martial arts. And then from there, got involved with playing sports. My primary sports was that I played football, lacrosse, and I wrestled for a little bit. As I advanced in my athletic career, I just chose to continue with lacrosse and football, and then went on to college to play uh, lacrosse. Now from there, after actual team sports, I got involved with CrossFit, because that was around 2012. It was still very popular, and it was growing at that time. And I got involved with the CrossFit box, I did enjoy it, but what I really noticed that I liked doing the Olympic lifts a lot. So after giving CrossFit a shot for a couple years, I switched over to Olympic weightlifting. And in that time, I cleaned and jerked over 400 plus pounds and I also snatched around 350 pounds. And then that had led me to get into strongman in 2017. So dove headfirst into the sport of strongman in 2017, started taking a lot of titles for local shows, you know, I'm PA strongest man for multiple times. And then from there, it led to nationals uh, where in 2019 I actually won the USS heavyweight title for both uh, the heavyweight 242 class and the heavyweight 275 class so that was really cool I've also traveled overseas for international strongman competitions and just have a wide variety of knowledge and experience when it comes to the sport of strongman I've also dabbled in hypertrophy training and bodybuilding all throughout my life. So when I was actually 18 years old, I did a bodybuilding competition. And then whenever I'm in my off season, I really like to utilize hypertrophy or bodybuilding training uh, just to you know give myself a breather, a break, build more muscle, and then potentiate that for strength later down the road. Now, last couple of years have been kind of crazy where I basically took a maintenance year where I was doing a lot of hypertrophy training mixed in with some strength here or there, uh, but 
when it came to overall competitions, I was laying low. There's a lot of things going on with work and just trying to figure out my career moving forward. But although it looks like one step back, I actually think it was three steps forward to where I'm at today because during that process, I learned a ton. I was also collecting data from the past program methods, all the things that I did right, things I did wrong. And then now I'm actually getting back into strength training and strongman with two uh, marked official competitions. One's more local, just fun. The second one's gonna be in January and that's a lot more serious. So I'm utilizing a lot of data and a lot of different things that I've collected over time and putting that all together to just grow and get better as an athlete and a coach. So enough about myself, go check out all the other videos and you can see more about me, but this is gonna be about how I can help you guys. So right now I'm gonna get more in depth on the programming styles that I've done in the past some things I like, some things I didn't like, and then what we're doing now. So we're gonna be bouncing all over the place, but I wanted to give you guys a background on my training career, program styles that I've done, and where I'm at today. So if we look all the way back to youth, right, I was 13 years old, my training was all over the place, right? Think about when you guys first started training. For me, there wasn't as much information that there is today, but there was still a lot. So I was kind of doing a mixture of everything, right? I was doing some running, I was doing strength program, I was doing bodybuilding, just trying to figure it out. Uh, but it was just a mishmash of everything and kind of getting ready for sports as well. But I was always that guy that would train with the team, probably strength training of some sort. Then I'd take my mom's minivan, drive to the local gym, and I'd do some more stuff on my own. That was kind of just how I eat, sleep, and breathe training for many years, even in college work out the college team, go back at night, train on my own. I was always trying to learn as much as I could, see what worked, what didn't work, and just always experimenting. But when I look back at it, and this is probably more in my high school years, I did have a, a personal trainer that helped me with sports performance and just getting a general base of strength. I probably look at it more as like Zach Evanesh style training that we were doing. And then when it came to things like football in the weight room, we were doing more of a linear progression okay so it's kind of like the standard five by five or something like starting strength we're adding five pounds each week uh, or new lifter and that's a novel stimulus for you you are probably going to get gains until you don't then when you don't get gains you got to figure out what we can do to switch it up and that's when i kind of ran into more of like a 531 program so i started using jim wendler's 531 i ran that a bunch had some great results when I didn't, I started making some adjustments to the program that better suited my needs and continue to make uh, gains in progress. Now that was more for just primary strength. We're talking about squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, that type of deal. And then after that, this is gonna be more in my probably early strongman career. So about 2016, 2017, I started linking up with Brian Alsrew, who's on YouTube and he's Never Say Athletics. The thing that drew me to Brian was he knew a lot about strongman and had strongman experience and I was getting into the sport so I wanted to pick his brain and learn more about it. He also kind of fit my image of what I wanted to look like and also perform like. So he's strong as heck, he's very athletic and he, as he liked to coin it, training dangerous. So there's the strength component, there's the conditioning component and then there's accessory component to a lot of his programs. So if you guys have ever ran a Brian Alzer style program, and I know there's plenty out there, right? You are going to get strong. You're going to be well conditioned. You're gonna be working a lot of different uh, variables. And that was kind of more of a wave slash concurrent style training program. So waves meaning that your percentages or your intensity is changing, changing almost day by day or week by week. And the concurrent meaning we're training different things like strength, power, explosiveness all throughout the week or we're rotating them in week by week okay so it's not the same as like a block periodization style now after doing brian's programming i started doing more block periodization so i got coached by alan thrall and he was primarily working with barbell medicine and being coached by them so it was very similar to how they program and with block periodization we are focusing on certain methods or training systems per block so you may have a gpp type of block, or then you may have a developmental type block, higher volume, lower intensity, then we may gear more towards strength, then we may have a block more geared towards power. And I got tremendous results doing block periodization. So kind of going back, 
When I was doing something like Brian Alzer's program, I did get stronger and I got a lot more condition and athletic. Then when my strength really needed to take a, a front seat of everything, I started doing block periodization and I noticed that my strength numbers really took off. Now the downside of, of doing the block periodization was I did feel like my athleticism took a little bit of a hit as well as my conditioning. Um, but the main goal was to get stronger and I really did get stronger utilizing that block periodization. And for me now it's trying to find that middle ground of how we can almost accomplish both because I do want to get that athleticism back and I still want to be ball strong. And like I said earlier, I always have done some sort of hypertrophy training throughout my training year. I think it's very advantageous to strength sport athletes when they're in their off season or maybe they're you know, trying to take a break from strength training to do a solid uh, hypertrophy training uh, regimen. So whether that's eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, it's gonna give your joints a bit of a break, it's gonna reset you mentally, it's gonna allow you to put on actual muscle size, which then we can potentiate for strength training. And I primarily do the same stuff that RP Strength uses, that's Mike Isertel, Jared Feather, Nick Shaw, those kind of guys in that company. And the cool story was that I was able to train with Mike Isertel during COVID. So he came over to the Lions Den. He was a mentor and a friend of mine. I learned so much. So if you guys are doing any of RP strength stuff, that's typically how I program my hypertrophy based on those same principles and concepts. The other thing that's cool being a meathead and a content creator is I've been able to travel all over the country and be able to learn from some of the best in the industry, whether that's in person or podcasts or text messaging, et cetera. If you guys watch videos in the channel, you'll see the people that I've worked with. They are no doubt some of the best or the best in the industry. So I've been able to have them as mentors to kind of help me throughout this whole process. Now, all these different styles of programming have pros and cons. It depends on when you want to leverage them in your training or what specifically you're looking to do. I can get more in those in other videos, but I'm not trying to keep this thing super long. Uh, but I, along the way, I have done specialty programs. There's a ton of them, but some examples would be like a squat everyday program or a Bulgarian style training or doing a mass program by Pat Davidson. Depending on where I'm at or what lifts I need to increase or what the goals are, I'll throw in these other specialty programs, which the pro is that typically they work very specific on what you're trying to do and you will get gains. The con is that usually other things will suffer. So it depends on where you're at and what you're trying to do to use those programs, but there's a ton of other ones. Those are just some examples. I'm sure you guys have tried some sort of specialty program and I'd be curious to see what your results have been down below. Now this kind of takes me where I'm at today. Like I had mentioned, I was kind of in a maintenance phase for about a year and now getting back into strength training, I'm trying to figure out what's my next best step. And this conjugate method or conjugate programming has been something that I've always been around, whether it's the people that I've trained with have done it or the people that I've talked to in the industry have done it. And I personally have never ran it. So I wanted to give it a shot. And the reason why is because I wanna learn more as an athlete, as a coach. I know what works for me, but I also don't wanna be pigeonholed in my own box. So I think it's important for coaches if they wanna to continue to grow to try different things. Even if I try this, and it doesn't work or I don't improve, I can still take the knowledge from that experience and either change it to make it work or I can learn to figure out what didn't work. And that enough for me is a good reason to do things. I can also now use it for myself. I can use it for the clients or the athletes I serve, depending on what their goals and needs are. And it's just a continual growth process when you guys are in it for the long haul. Now, outside of those reasons, it was appealing to me because there is max effort days, and then there's also dynamic effort days, which we'll talk about more in explanation when I get to what I'm doing. Um, but I just felt like that was a nice change of pace for me. It allows me to lift heavy weight and be that meathead. It also allows me to focus on technique and get speed work in, which kind of balances things out instead of going heavy all the time or instead of maybe doing something like block periodization where I'm sticking with the same things. It breaks up the monotony due to its variation and its training concepts. It's also concurrent style training, which means that we get the strength stuff in there. We also have the explosiveness and speed work on our dynamic days. And we also get the repetition method work, which is gonna be more like your hypertrophy or bodybuilding. So it's kind of accumulation of the best of both worlds. And 
There are also some absolute freaks that use this training style. So yes, it probably does have its pros and cons, which maybe I can talk about in this video or another video, but it's undeniable how many people get balls strong doing this type of program, the amount of high level lifters that it's produced. Uh, so to me, that's interesting. Now I could get stuck in my box and continue to do what works for me, but I wanna give this a shot. I wanna pick and choose the things that I like, maybe throw it in to block periodization or another style of program, but I'm just educating myself and I'm just learning. This is a learning experience. So with all that being said, let's dive into a general template of what I am doing using conjugate methods. Now I am training typically around five to six days per week. And what I'll do is give you my base four days in this program that I'm about to show you. And then also a full seven day layout of kind of how I include all the other things I'm doing. Because outside of what you're gonna see as my base programming, I do cardio and I condition pretty much every day. And then I'm also doing some odd lifts just purely for fun and something I enjoy. And there are goals that I have and weak areas that I wanna bring up. So throughout the week, I'll show you on which days I'm doing what and kind of how I regulate my fatigue and intensity. Now I will say that there is a lot in this program and I'm not sure I'll be able to cover all of it in the depth it deserves, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of what I'm doing and then you can make it work for you. On top of that, this is a whole process for myself. So where it starts is probably not how it's gonna end. And there's a lot of things that I'm learning along the way, um, but I think it's cool for you guys to see that process in real time. And then as it's going, I can explain to you, you know, what I changed from the start or what I'm doing differently, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And if I need to make changes based on what I'm doing, which yes, I'm going to because I'm already doing it. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this thing. I'm not gonna lie, this could be a several hour video, but I'm trying to give you guys the base of this and condense it very simply. However, when you come from someone who's done block periodization, essentially their entire training career, and that's worked really well, and then you go to a conjugate method program, I use the analogy of if you guys are video gamers, because I'm a closet nerd myself, a block periodization program is essentially where you have a game with levels where we all start at the same part and then we finish at the same part and then we go on to the next level right where we have the boss at the end and we all kind of have a similar journey in that sense if you're staying with me now conjugate is more like an open world video game something like elden ring or the new zelda where they drop you off in this open world where yeah you could take on the main boss right there he's in front of you but it's probably not the best move and as long as you follow the principles you're going to eventually get to that boss and succeed, but how you get there, how I get there, is gonna be very different, right? We may go do some side quests. We may get some loot and some gear and pimp ourselves out, you know, get our weapons, but our character is gonna look different. We're gonna have different attributes. The trash truck is here. But if we follow that system and the guidelines, we will beat the game. So for me, my brain has been kind of exploding on a daily basis, but I'm getting closer and closer to figuring out or at least what works for me each day and each week. So the conjugate system or method was popularized uh, by the Soviets from what I understand, and they were ahead of it a long time before we were, but a lot of people know it because of Louis Simmons and West Side Barbell. So I'm not gonna discredit them whatsoever. And I also do want to preface that I always hear everybody say that conjugate isn't West Side. If you didn't train at West Side, then you weren't doing West Side. I never trained at West Side, so this isn't West Side. But when it comes to the conjugate system, the main premise behind it is that we have max effort training days, and then we have dynamic effort training days. So what I look at is like maximal strength for these days, and then speed and technique work for those days. So typically we have a max effort lower day, we have a max effort upper day, then we have a dynamic effort lower day, and then we have a dynamic effort upper day. And when we're doing those max effort days, that is what we're doing exactly as it sounds. We're going balls to the walls with some sort of variation of the lift that we're trying to increase. And it's gonna be somewhere between that one to five rep range. Now people are gonna argue that if you're doing a five rep max, that's not you know, a true maximal effort. But for me, being out of the strength game for some time, I wanna use those five rep 
max variations to accumulate uh, some intensity while also allowing my body to get used to what I'm about to do to it. I'm also doing this in a wave style progression. So the first week I'm working up to a five rep max. The second week I'm gonna do a three rep max. And then the last week of the wave, I'm gonna do a one rep max. Based on how my total fatigue is, I can deload on that fourth week or I could restart or I could maybe push the reps just to stay within that one to three rep range because I've been accumulating more exposure to that strength training and going heavy again, my body's adjusted. I didn't wanna go balls to the walls right away and have something happen with an injury or just say that my ligaments and tendons weren't prepared for it yet. So for me, I'm using the concepts of graded exposure and just auto-regulatory methods so that I can be in it for a while, I can reap the benefits and I don't get hurt. So that's where we're at. So on my max effort lower day, since I'm a strongman athlete, I'm primarily concerned with my deadlift strength and I'm gonna be doing some sort of deadlift variation. So I have here, you can do deadlift or squat variation and you wanna pick that variation to work on your weak points. So for me, I was doing uh, a trap bar deadlift and what I'll do is I'll work up to that five rep max typically and then what I'll do is I'll do a back off set uh, with taking off 20% of that weight, but that's gonna fluctuate depending on how you're feeling. Could be 20, could be 10%. And then we're gonna do two back off sets. And typically what I like to do is leverage RPE. So they're almost like AMREP sets, but I don't want it to go higher than an eight and a nine with RPE. So I'll do two sets there. Uh, then we have our accessory work. And I gave myself anywhere from two to four movements. And once again, you can auto-regulate this based on your needs, how you're feeling. You can do two movements and be fine. If you need more, you can add those as well. So this is kind of a premise that I was sticking with where I have my first movement gonna be more of a back or hamstring focus. Then movement two is gonna be more quad and glute. And if I wanted to, I could do another quad and glute. I could cut it there, or I could do something like calves. And where it's a little bit different is I know in Westside there are so many variations you can throw in. And to me, that's almost too much for where I'm at right now. So I'm just sticking with these same variations for this entire wave. So if I do a trap bar for a five rep max, I'm gonna do it next week for that three rep max. And I'm gonna do my back offs using that trap bar. When it comes to my accessory movements, I'm gonna keep those the same and stick with that uh, progressively overloading, either adding more sets to the accessory or trying to beat reps with similar weight so that I know that I'm getting better and I'm making improvements. But what we wanna do is make sure that our accessory movements are adding to the main movement that we wanna get better at. So if you find that you have weaknesses, that's a great time where you wanna hammer those accessories and that's gonna be where we use the repetition method. So that's just gonna be more like your bodybuilding uh, you know, fluff and puff type stuff to increase the, the strength in those muscle groups or muscle patterns. Now what I've been doing recently when it comes on these max effort days is that first accessory movement, I'm still trying to keep in that anywhere from three to five rep range because I just wanna work a little bit more strength. So say for me, maybe it's like an RDL. Well, I'm gonna do my three sets of my RDLs in that three to six rep range. So I'm getting more strength work in and then I'll increase the volume for the other accessories, probably anywhere from eight to 12 reps, three to four sets, and then maybe I'll push it more uh, with sets and volume as it goes on. So that's kind of the general outline. Then on day two, we have our max effort upper day. So if you're in strongman, maybe it's gonna be overhead press or a variation of the overhead press or just a pressing variation that's gonna help with your overhead press. Um, if not, it could be your bench press. So same rules apply for up here. So for me, maybe it's gonna be a close grip board press of some nature. And then from there, I will do my back offsets and then I'm gonna hit accessories. And for these accessory movements, I'm looking to hit something that's gonna hit the chest, then usually the triceps and then maybe a shoulder at the end. Uh, but just focusing on that primary heavy variation and then the accessory work to complement that. Now, as we get over to the dynamic effort days, we're gonna be focusing more on skill acquisition in terms of technique with the lift and moving weight fast, okay? So this is where I kind of call these like your speed or explosive days. So we have our two primarily heavy days 
and you want to probably separate these with at least 48 hours. So I find like a Monday and Wednesday, then like a Friday, Saturday works well for this kind of split. If you can't, not the end of the world, but you want to make sure that you're able to recover from these sessions, get the most benefit from them, and then you can do your dynamic effort work. On the dynamic effort days, we are going to use our competition lift. So for me, that's going to be the conventional deadlift, or it's going to be something like the overhead press, or maybe for you guys, it'll be whatever deadlift you're going to compete with and whatever press you're going to compete with. So maybe it's the bench press if you're a power lifter. If you're a strong man, maybe some sort of overhead press. And when we're doing these days, we want to do basically anywhere from 40 to 50% of our one rep max. And then typically we're going to add some sort of accommodating resistance, such as bands or chains. Now you don't need to use bands or chains. If you don't have bands or chains, I would just increase the percentage of your one rep max a little bit and just working on being as explosive and fast with that weight as possible. And for these, typically we're going to do something like on the minute work. So you want to be doing, for example, nine sets of three with 40% of the one rep max plus some sort of band tension. And the band tension could be anywhere from 20 to 30% you know, of your one rep max. I've seen so many programs recommending different things, but the main point is that it's not so heavy that we can't work on moving the bar very fast, uh, but it's not so light that you don't feel it. So for week one for me, it's gonna be nine sets of three. Week two will be eight sets of three. Uh, week three will be nine sets of two. And I progressively increase the weight on the bar, trying to keep that same speed, showing that I'm able to develop more force, that I'm getting stronger with those lifts. Uh, and I really enjoy them because usually those, those sessions go pretty quickly because you're staying between that 60 and 90 second rest period. You're getting GPP and conditioning in and you're just moving weight very explosively. So for me, this is great with my personality type, which is something you want to factor in. Uh, and then two, if you're trying to still kind of build athleticism and explosiveness in your program, that's one of the real, uh, main reasons that I really enjoy this. The other thing on these days is you can add in plyometrics too. So say you're doing your deadlift, right? Prior to that, you could do some box jump plyometrics. You could do broad jumps. You could do explosive kettlebell swings. Anything of that nature is fine on these days. And it, it, you can get creative and pick and choose you know, what you want to do. You're only limited by your imagination when it comes to this type of programming. Now for the dynamic effort days, I typically am going to do my deadlift variation on the minute. And I'm also going to do some sort of squat variation on the minute. I'm going to prioritize that deadlift a little bit more because it's strongman. But you can pick whichever one you want to take a priority. You also, should have said this earlier, you can alternate week by week if you wanted to. So you could do a deadlift on week one on your max effort, and then next week it's gonna be a squat variation. You know, the, the whole point of this is that it's over the long term and it's not instant gratification. So unfortunately, we live in a world where we want instant gratification, which is why other programs make us feel that way. Uh, but for this, I look at it as like a long term thing. So instead of like a 12 week, uh, you know, wave or, or block, whatever you want to call it. I'm looking at months ahead of time because if I'm looking at months over time and I'm alternating the squat and the deadlift, well, over months I'll be able to get good gains in both. So you got to make it work for what works best for you guys. Um, but kind of back to how this is, I'll do my main dynamic effort and then I will still do accessories. Now I try to switch the accessories a bit from the max effort days just for variation, but I will stick with them throughout the whole wave. And if they continue to work, I'll still use them in future waves. If not, the beauty about this is you can just change up the variations and there's so many of them, but don't make it that you're just overwhelming yourself with the amount of variations that you can pick because I like having some sort of standard to see and know that I'm getting better over time. Now day four is gonna be my dynamic effort upper day. And that can either be the overhead press or the bench press or both. And um, then, like I said, I'll kind of follow the same wave structure of nine sets of three, eight sets of three, nine sets of two, and then potentially deload. And then the accessory, once again, is going to uh, still help with those lifts, but I'm going to change it from the first day. So this is going to be more of a chest, tri, shoulder. This is going to be more of a back 
uh, shoulder focus day right here. So that's kind of the general outline of what I'm doing with my strength training, utilizing conjugate method, and how I'm structuring it with waves. And like I said, this is only the first month I've been doing this. There's a ton to learn, uh, but I think it's a good starting point for myself and somebody who wanted to get into conjugate style training. There may be some points about this that I missed. And like I said, there's hundreds and hundreds of different programs out there with different wave variations, different ways to do your max effort, your dynamic effort days with variations, etc. And that's where it can get a bit overwhelming. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, but I also really like how I can auto regulate things on the fly. So for example, if you guys are doing you know, your accessory and you feel like you got what you needed done in two movements, well, you don't need to waste any more time on that stuff. You know, you can cut it there. However, if you feel like you need to add more or pick some more accessories, by all means, you can go for it and you can do it. So the world's kind of your oyster with this type of thing. But I will say what makes it tough and challenging is you need to have some sort of understanding on how to auto-regulate for yourself. Uh, so this is just my base template, but I do make adjustments on the fly where maybe I cut out an accessory movement, maybe I add a little bit here, whether it's on my back offs or my accessory lifts, uh, just to get that stimulus I'm looking for to bring up those weak points and then my overall strength over time. All right, guys, I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, so stay with me. So I wanted to show you what it looks like on a weekly template, and this has to do with getting my extra work in for specific things I have goals for, such as grip training, neck training, cardio, all that good stuff. And once again, what I do wanna reiterate is this is all auto-regulatory, meaning that this is the, the plan, but I do change things around depending on how fatigue is going, my schedule could be crazy, I could be really banged up from just training in general, whatever. So sometimes I take some of this stuff out, sometimes I keep it in, sometimes I switch it around, but this is just the base that I work off of. So Monday, beginning of the week, we're gonna do some zone two, 30 to 60 minutes. So that's about 70% of your max heart rate. And then usually I'll do an odd lift, okay? And when I'm doing those odd lifts, guys, I'm just working up to one set around RPE six to eight. So there's not a ton of volume involved with it. And I can also change the intensity depending on the odd lift I'm doing. For example, if I'm doing some sort of grip implement as my odd lift, yes, it could be heavy for that lift, but it's not super systemically fatiguing, which our main concern with any odd lifts or stuff we do in the AM is that it doesn't screw up us for the PM. So that AM session is usually done from six to about eight AM. And then my PM session is usually always around 5 PM. So there's a good amount of time for me to get food in, recover, get work done, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they're not affecting each other. Now day two, wake up, zone two cardio once again, 30, 60 minutes. That 30 to 60 is just for you to figure out if you are too fatigued, keep on the lower end. If you're feeling good, push to the higher end. And then in the PM is when I focus on biceps, grip, and neck work. And then Wednesday, we have our AM hit session. So that's gonna be 15 to 30 minutes of just high output, okay? High intensity interval training. This can be done with sprints, it can be done on different cardio machines, it can be done with strongman equipment, bodyweight stuff. I don't care, whatever you guys wanna to do to get your heart rate where it needs to be uh, for that duration, that's fine. But make sure that if you're doing high intensity interval training, you're pushing hard for that bout, and then you're resting and repeating so you're getting the, the proper desired effect. Then in the PM, we have our max effort upper day. Then on Thursday, we're doing zone two again, 30 to 60 minutes. Typically, I'll start to see any issues with fatigue by Thursday. So maybe it's just a 30 minute walk, all right? Maybe it's just going to be uh, getting my steps in for the day and I don't actually do a 30 minute walk. It's just trying to stay more active throughout the day for blood flow and recovery. Uh, and then in the PM, we're gonna do bicep, grip, and neck work. And then Friday, we have the AM hit once again, 15 to 30 minutes with an odd lift, which is optional. So depending on how fatigue is going, if I'm feeling good, I'll do the odd lift. If I have to change the variation of the odd lift, so it's not gonna bang me up or set me back for the next training week, I'll do that. And then in the PM, we have the dynamic effort lower. And then Saturday, AM, typically we're doing some strongman, more focused work with the dynamic effort upper. And I will say throughout 
my regular program that I showed on the board, some of those variations are going to be more strongman specific, or maybe they're gonna have some more grip work in there, etc. So it's not just that I'm only doing strongman on one day per week, it's just that this on Saturday typically is when I will start it off with some sort of event work specific to a competition I wanna do. Uh, but there is strongman scattered throughout variations in my program. But I'll do that. When it comes to cardio for that day, all I care about is just getting my daily step count in, which is 12K minimal for every single day. And Sunday is my completely off day where all I care about is just daily step count. So whatever I gotta do to get my 12K in throughout the day, but there's no other training on Sundays, just total rest fueling up, you know, planning for the next week, et cetera. So I always recommend you have at least one day completely off from training for me that Sunday. Uh, but, you know, once again, these uh, sessions, when I do them in the PM are nothing too crazy. And I find that I'm continually getting uh, progress in them. Now, if I'm not, maybe I'll scratch one or two of them so I can allow myself more recovery time, or the answer could simply just be increasing my nutrition to better my performance. So that's just the rough outline of kind of how I'm programming right now. It's a madhouse, it's nuts, it's insane. Like I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot going through my brain. Uh, I've, I've been doing this for a while and exposing myself to conjugate has been one of the best uh, but toughest challenges because it's, it's like completely just taking your mind, something that's used to and, and flipping it upside down. So when it comes to the pros of utilizing conjugate, I really enjoy the two max effort days. It fits great for my meathead personality, going in, lifting some heavy ass weight and uh, just scratch that itch. And on top of that, the dynamic effort complements it really nice where lighter weight, still very focused and having the right intention, uh, but it complements it nice with how you are regulating fatigue throughout the week, I would say. The other great thing that I love about it is the amount of variations you can use depending on if you're banged up, you know, you got aches, tweaks, or you want to just play with something for the sake of playing with it, you can. I would say the downside of it has just been how open it is, and it's not necessarily that there's a right or wrong way to do it. You just got to follow these concepts. So for me, I think it's just having that trust and only it being a month of me doing this, I need to continue to do it to really see what I learn and how I implement it down the road, but I'm here for it because once again, this is me just trying to learn. I wanna become a better athlete, a better coach. I wanna be able to talk to other coaches and understand what they're talking about when they do talk about conjugate method or concurrent style training programs or wave versus block periodization, et cetera. So, um, you know, if you guys are, are into it, you know, we'll track how we do. And I just am showing you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm totally welcome to feedback. Obviously, I'm being transparent and telling you that this is new to me, so please don't try to trash me in the comments section. There's tons of things that I can be doing better, tons of things I could change, um, but I figured if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, you can learn how my brain operates and use any of these principles uh, for bettering yourself as, as a coach or an athlete. But that's where we're at, guys. I really appreciate everybody who took the time to watch this video. It's more lengthy of me just rambling on. It's nothing super pretty. Um, I can make more in-depth videos on certain points that I brought up throughout this video. And I'd love to just keep, you know, I would just love to keep helping you guys. So if you want to support the channel, there's a link down below in the description. It's my link tree. It gives you access to different program options that I have, my Patreon, all my other social media links and accounts, stuff like that. So uh, we're trying to get this channel back up and running and I'm just having fun with it. I'm having fun learning new things. I'm having fun training again. I'm getting really stoked to compete. We got those two big competitions coming up uh, for strongman, and I'm interested to utilize these new programming concepts to just make myself better and learn and grow as a coach. So, not gonna keep rambling on. If you guys enjoyed it, subscribe, give the video a like. Uh, I'm gonna shout out that I'm really grateful to my friends who have helped me, you know, try to understand this. My mentors, my coaches, who have gotten me to where I am at today, uh, because it's been a journey and a process for sure. And without those people, I would not be able to do what I do. So you know who you are. Thank you so much for helping me out. Give me you know, your time and feedback when it comes to you know, me being a nerdy programming meathead dude. Uh, and I know that this video will help at least somebody. Now, if your brain also hurts and I did a terrible job with this video, I'm sorry.
trying to put this together in my brain that made the most sense was very difficult and I think it may be due for more videos in the future. But once again, comment down below, give me your thoughts and let's just have fun. Let's play around, let's experiment and let's be absolute savages. So stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine and I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.